Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm delighted to greet you on this holy Thursday in the matters and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm glad to see everyone. Allow me to apologize. I had a glitch on yesterday that we were not able to meet for Bible study. So just continue to be prepared and we will have our Bible study on next Wednesday. I got locked out of my office at home and just couldn't get back in. And so please accept my um, apologies. I'm hoping that all roads lead to Salem tonight, where we will have our reenactment of the Lord's Supper for the first time since the pandemic. I hope that you will make your way here on this most holy Thursday, when Jesus has his last and final intimate meal with his disciples. We want to reenact what we believe that the Lord had with his disciples in the upper room on that Holy Thursday prior to the resurrection. I hope that you will make your way here. I know there are those who are concerned that we're in this fast and if having the upper room Seder meal, Seder meal will affect the fast. No, absolutely not. My prayer is that we will do what is called today a partial fast and that you'll pass, fast from sun up to sundown or whatever your pleasure might be this meal will not happen until about 7.30, 8 o'clock. So, and at that, we will be having the elements that we believe that the Lord had. We'll have the bitter herbs. We will have the unleavened bread. We will have the juice um, that represents the wine that the Lord had. We will have roasted lamb that will be the sacrificial lamb, Jesus himself, who becomes a sacrificial lamb for all of us. But this is the meal that Jesus had with his disciples. And it was after that that he instituted what is called the Holy Communion. I hope that you will be here because it is so important that we draw closer to the cross in this time, that we draw strength from the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ made for us. Because it took one who knew no sin to die for our sin. Sin cannot cast out sin. So it took a sinless person and so God sent his only begotten son in the form of flesh to pay the penalty for our sins. For God had already declared that the wages of sin is death, but praise God that the gift of God is eternal life. For God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the essence, and we can't really draw the joy that comes with the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, unless we walk with him in this final week. And certainly these two final days, Holy Thursday and Good Friday, when we'll meet here at the church and we will have the seven last sayings from the cross, Jesus' last utterance from the cross before he's taken down from the cross and placed into the tomb. And then we'll come back on Easter Sunday morning Early in the morning, the Bible says, while it was yet dark, we will celebrate the Holy Communion at that time. We will also have baptism. We praise God for two wonderful souls that have become part of this fellowship. God is good and is worthy to be praised. All right, let's move rapidly to the meditation. Won't keep you long, but just know that God loves you and so do I. And let's continue to really be prayerful in this time as the writer of Psalms writes, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he's near, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thought and return unto the Lord and he will have mercy and abundantly pardon. He will have mercy and abundantly pardon. All right. Um, the meditation today comes right out of our meditation booklet. I hope that you're doing the gleaner with us. And the writer writes today out of Philippians chapter 2. It is what is considered to be the Christological hymn. And he says, adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. And Paul writes to the church at Philippi, one that he dearly loved, in Philippians chapter 2, commencing with verse 5, though he was in the form of God, speaking about Jesus now, 
he did not consider being equal with God something to be exploited. Although he was God and he was in the form of God as a human being, he said at one point, I could call on my father, God the father, and he could send me thousands of angels to deliver me from this. No man takes my life from me. If I have the power to lay it down, I have the power to take it up again. Greater love have no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. But look at the attitude of Jesus. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and becoming like a human being. When he found himself in the form of a human, when he became incarnate like we, he didn't get arrogant. He didn't use the power that he had. But the Bible says he humbled himself by becoming obedient. Not just any kind of obedience, but even to the death of the cross. This was the most cruciating, the most grueling, the most humiliating kind of death that anyone could go through on a cross that those passing by could make a spectacle out of you and they could see how powerful the Roman government was. But he humbled himself for us because he loved us. And then there's that conjunctive word. Can we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and then watch and see what God will do? Paul goes on to say, therefore, this conjunctive word, when we can humble ourselves, therefore God has highly exalted him, given him a name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee today will have to bow and every tongue have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all to the glory of God the Father. And I want to say to you that whatever God has for you is for you. When God elevates you, no one can bring you down. If we can humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. The author of our meditation says, even death on a cross, that line always stands out to me. It's like Paul is quoting an ancient Christian hymn in Philippians 2, which gives us insight into how the earliest Jesus followers talked about him. The tension reflected here in this hymn, and that is that Jesus' exaltation only happened after his humiliation. Death on the cross precedes Jesus being given the name above all names. Holy Week reminds us that there are no shortcuts along the journey, not if we are to experience transformation for which we long. If we want God to do great and miraculous things for us, we must be able to be obedient. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call upon him whom they have not heard? And how shall they preach without a preacher? How shall they preach unless they be sent? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And so my prayer is that you will heed the words of God through this human vessel, that you'd make your way here tonight for our cedar mill as we have the reenactment of what we believe to be the final supper that Jesus had with his disciples. That service will start tonight, promptly at seven o'clock. We will send to the upper room no later than 745. And then we will be with the Savior. Thursday was a dark day. We find that Jesus eats with his disciples. 
He prays for deliverance in the Garden of Gethsemane. He is betrayed by Peter. He's abandoned by his disciples. He's arrested in darkness. He is interrogated and condemned to death by the high priest and his council, the local collaborators with imperial authority. All of this happens on this Holy Thursday. We'll be looking for you, you, and you. God bless you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's um, say hello to some of you who have joined me. Thank you. Good afternoon, Maxine, um, Coral Powell, Richard Fagan, Deborah Dunham, how are you? I'll give you a call in a little while, Ms. Ruby Ramsey. Maxine, always good to see you. Wanda Roberts. Good afternoon, Marjorie. Good to see you. Mary Lawrence, Zara Jones, thank you so much. Good to see each and every one of you. Um, tomorrow, we will not have noonday prayer. Tomorrow, we will have service at noon, our Good Friday service in person. Won't you meet us here as we commemorate the Holy Week services with our Good Friday service. We'll talk about what's good about Good Friday. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. To God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth as we yet try to understand it, we give you thanks. We thank you, O oh God, for this week that draws us closer to the cross. Draw me nearer and nearer to thy precious bleeding side. Draw me nearer to the cross where thou hast died. Is that the cross, at the cross, where I receive my sight and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith we were able to see. And now we can be happy all the day. And so God, bless each person and the sound of my voice. Meet us at the point of our need. May we be closer to you. And may we have the mind of Christ that we might humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God as Jesus, who thought about robbery to be made equal with you. But he humbled himself and became obedient even unto the death of the cross. Thank you that Jesus paid it all, but help us, O oh God, to declare and to decide to be obedient to your will and to your way. We love you today, O oh God, and we thank you for all that you've done. Meet each person at the point of their need where there's sickness, O oh God, be a doctor. Where there's confusion, be our peace. Where there's lack, be a provider. We love you, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, we adore you, and we magnify you. And we thank you for the victory that we know will be ours as we come through the res as we come through the crucifixion. We know that the resurrection is on the other side. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How are you, Corazon? Good to see you. Sister Phyllis Laria, good to see you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at our Good Friday service.